The Lord has been good. Amen. He is good. Yes. And you know, Pastor Matt came up here and I was like, please don't preach my message. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I love when that happens because then you know that you're on the right track. Amen. You know that you're hearing from the Lord. And this morning, the Lord has given me a message entitled, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you would turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 11. The book of Philippians chapter 4, starting at verse 11. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned. I want you to focus on that phrase. I, for I have learned in whatsoever state yes, yes, yes. I am in, therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things, all things, all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, Nia and I, we're on our way here, and I never pretend to be something that I'm not. All hell was breaking loose in that car on the way here. Everything was trying to stop this message from going forth. And I believe with all of my heart that the Lord allows us to travel through some things in order to preach his word. Because he doesn't want us to just have a head knowledge of his word. He wants us to experience it in our everyday life and living it out. And I believe with all my heart, you know, I had something written down and I started, see, get a good friend that's going to preach truth to you. Get a spouse that's going to preach truth to you. Get a pastor that's going to preach truth to you. Because I, I told her something at home and she began to preach the very words back to me that I had already been preaching to her. And she said, Angela, what was that Greek word that you told me? See, that word strengthen, it means endomno, which means to empower, to enable, or to make strong. To power, to enable, or to make strong. And that word is a fixed word. It means that you are in a fixed position of strength. You are in a fixed position to be empowered. You are in a fixed position to be enabled through Christ, yes. in Christ, oh, in Lord. him. You are already in a fixed position. Yes. From the moment you said yes to Jesus oh, Christ, man. the Holy Spirit took you, placed you, baptized you into Christ, into his death, into his burial, into his resurrection, yeah. and now you are fixed. In him. Yes. Right. Yes. In a place of strength. Amen. In a place of empowerment. Amen. That's what I came to talk to you yeah. about yeah. this morning. Lord. I, listen, I can get right behind Sabrina and we can run around this place yeah. because I know that I know what yeah. Christ has already done for me. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. I thank God for what he did for me. The blood of Jesus not only set me free from a sinful lifestyle, drugs and everything that went with it, but it also has kept me. It has kept 
grace. Not because I've done everything right, because I definitely have not done that. It was by his blood and by his grace. So what do I want to talk to you about this morning? The process of learning to be content, no matter what we face, no matter what we go through. There is, you're in a learning curve. <laughs> we're, we're, we're learning day after day after day. And if you have a child, you don't get upset with them for learning. And Jesus is not upset with us for learning how to walk with him. And I want you to remember through this learning process that you are in a fixed position. Amen. Yeah. See, we need to know that. Yes. We need to know that we are fixed in Christ, that his blood was enough and that you are in him. And the setting of this story. And listen, I'm a setting person. Because I like to see the context of the message and where, what's going on, what's happening at the time. And I love this because Paul was a real man. And he was going through some things. And we need to know that. Paul wrote this book and the, surround, the surroundings and the circumstance where he wrote, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He was in jail. Come on, I've been in jail. And I know what it was like there, and it was cold, and it was dark, and it was lonely, yeah. and there were, it was tormenting, and I was sad, and I was mad, and I was angry, and I had all these emotions going on. Right. See, Paul was there, but he knew somebody. Yes. He yes. knew the Lord while he was in there, and Christ gave him the strength and gave him the revelation <coughs> that even though he was in this place, and in this circumstance, okay, maybe you might not be in jail right now. You're not. You're sitting right in front of me. But there might be an area in our life or in our heart, okay, that we can't get out of. But God wants to set us free. He wants to give you freedom today. There might be a mindset that we might have. We might be depressed. We might be anxious. We might be fearful. We might be sitting in the unknown and not know what to do. I don't know where you're today or if you're struggling with something but God is the God of your struggle and he is able to set you free and in that prison he set Paul free in his heart and in his mind that he could write down I have learned this see if we aren't put through something we're not going to learn anything we need to learn and during the learning process we need to study for the test I stole that from Naya, and I preached that. That was good. Thank you, Naya. Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah, it does take a while. But you know what? As long as we don't quit, he's not going to quit. As long as we don't quit, he's not going to quit. Hallelujah. And Pastor Matt touched on this, so I'm going to go back to it. During this time, the church of Philippi was established while Paul and Silas were in prison. This church was being established. God can establish you through hardships. Catch that. You might be going through a hardship right now. It might look like a horrible circumstance that you can't see any way out of. But God was in the establishing business while they were in prison and in jail and in shackles. He was establishing them. He was establishing the church. He was using it for his glory. And late in the midnight hour, God turned it around and established a people. Yes, we're in this house. Okay, it's a church, but you are the church. He's establishing your relationship with him. He's establishing your faith in him. He's establishing a strength in you and a power in you that you don't have within yourself. He's establishing you through a hardship. So we must learn something in it. 
What I love about Paul is he always surrounded himself with people that had a zeal and a passion for the things of God. And I want to say that surround yourself with the people that have the same vision, that have the same heartbeat, that have that want the things of God. I'm not talking about perfection. Amen. I'm talking about just the people that are hungry. Yeah. I'm talking about a people that want to run after the things of God. Surround yourself because one day we might end up in a circumstance that we got to learn how to praise and pray through the circumstance. Yeah. And I want somebody by my side that's able to praise and pray through the circumstance with me. That's why we're the body of Christ. And the nature of this book was to encourage unity. There's strength in unity. Yes, yes. There's strength there. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. We should serve one another. How can I serve you? How can I wash your feet? How can I pour a glass of cold water so to say that you would be refreshed? What can I do for you? That's how we should be as the body of Christ. We should love one another. Amen. There should not be one person that walks in the door of this house and doesn't say, we don't say hello to them and we don't love on them and we don't give them a hug and we don't show them the love of God. That's what, this is a hospital for the broken. This isn't a place for the perfect. This is where God can move and heal and deliver. Amen. Hallelujah. A place where we can encourage steadfastness. There's a steadfastness that God wants to give us, but he can only produce it through trials. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> Scripture says, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Steadfast. Immovable, firmly fixed, not subject to change, firm in belief. You're determined. There's an adherence. There's a loyalty. Think about that with the Lord. To adhere to something means that you attach yourself to. Yes. That's good. What have we attached ourselves to? Mm -hmm. Wow. And when I was thinking about this, you guys might laugh at this, I don't know, but I was thinking about gorilla glue. Gorilla glue. And how when you put that, I mean, you could put hang a mirror with that stuff. Like, there's an adherence and there's a weight that it can carry. And you can't pull it off. You can't fix it. You can't. Once you stick the glue, gorilla glue on the wall and you put every, whatever you want to put on it, on it, it's not moving. That's right. It's not moving. And that's how we should be with the Lord. Amen. We should adhere to him, attach ourselves to him. There should be a loyalty, a determination that we are firm in our belief, that we are fixed, that we are not subject to change. Yes, right. Don't let anyone come in and change your belief about what the Lord has already shown you. Yes, come on. Protect your anointing. Amen. Protect your relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand unmovable. Adhere to what he has to say to you. Be committed Amen. to him. Amen. Be committed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this letter was also a letter of thanksgiving. Mm. Naya's mom always would say to us when we were in New Jersey, uh, a grateful heart will take you all the way to glory. A grateful heart will take you all the way to heaven. Because as you continue to be grateful for the things God has done for you, then he's going to show up. He's going to make himself real in those aspects in your life. As you begin to look at the goodness of Jesus, if you begin to thank him for who he is, he will become that in your life. He will make it real. He will establish yes, it. Yes, he will. Hallelujah. He will establish that in your heart. And the highlights of this book is true joy. True joy independent of external circumstances. Yes. Yeah. Wow. True joy independent of external circumstances. Right. Okay, I'm not in the scripture, but you need to get this right here. 
Because this is the way that we should be living our Christian walk. Amen. This is what we need. Yes. And where does the joy come from? Whoa. Our relationship yes. with yes. Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Because you're, I'm going to tell you this. Our circumstances are always going to be changing. Amen. Every single day that we wake up, something is going to be happening to distract us, to dismantle our relationship with Christ, to destroy our faith, to pull us away from the direction that God has us going. Wow. Yes. But there's a joy that the world couldn't give and the world can't take it away. When you hear us shouting and praising and hooing and hollering and running and dancing and falling on our knees or maybe just a quiet confidence because we all express ourselves in a different way and the Lord loves that and that's okay. Amen. That's okay, but there's a joy that despite what you face, God can give it to you. It comes through proper fellowship with Jesus Christ. And Paul's imprisonment wasn't to get him down, wasn't to beat him up. It was to further the gospel. So you think we're in a hard, we might be in a hard circumstance right now. What if that very circumstance is producing something in you to further the gospel, to further the kingdom of God, to further your relationship with him? He's just not up there going, ha ha, I got them today. (laughs) But I know that's how we feel sometimes. I'll be real with you. Yeah, no. He's producing faith in you. He's producing strength in you. And Paul's dilemma, it was life or death. It didn't matter. It didn't matter what he faced. It didn't matter what he went through. He was going with Jesus. And Paul's great example of joy came from within. He said to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ and to die is gain. By faith in the Son of God. That's all he wanted. He wanted to see souls saved or to be with Jesus. He wanted to see Christ produced or to be with Jesus. And I told Pastor Matt when we were in prayer, I said, man, I wish the Lord would just come back. And he said, Robert's about to get you for saying that (laughs) because we still got work to do. And I believe that, but I I still look forward. See, the Bible says, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. Okay, I'm excited about Jesus coming back. I want Jesus to come back. But for me to live on this earth right now, right now is Christ. Then we want to see Christ produced in our lives, produced in our families, produced in our children, produced on the job, produced in you, produced in this church. We want to see Christ. But to die would be to be present with the Lord. So we're winners either way. You're a winner no matter what. You're still on the winning side. Hallelujah. And Paul, the Holy Spirit birthed this in Paul's heart in jail. I want you to really see that. See, because in the storm, he's still Lord of all. And he was birthing something. The Lord was birthing something in Paul's heart during this time. That I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Despite the hostile situation around him, there was a joy of the Lord that was setting him free. Paul starts off this chapter of the process of learning. He starts off saying, I beseech you. And I was like, that'd be interesting if we walked around like, Pastor Matt, I beseech you today. (laughs) (laughs) But beseech meant to beg, to ask, to entreat, to urge, to advise. And basically Paul was saying, listen up. This is urgent. And you have to hear what the Lord has to say. I got something to say and it's from God. I beseech you. The Holy Spirit wants you to hear what I have to say. As Paul began to write this letter to the Philippians, 
And what did he start off with? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Re rejoice in the Lord. See, when we rejoice in our circumstances, you can't rejoice in your circumstances all the time. Okay, one minute we're up, one minute we're down, one minute we're around. It doesn't matter. It's whatever you're going through at the moment, that's not what he's talking about. He's talking about rejoicing in who God is. Right. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice that he's your righteousness. Rejoice that he's your peace. Rejoice that he's your provider. Rejoice that he's your friend. Rejoice that he's a brother that sticks closer. Rejoice yeah. that he's your deliverer and strong and mighty tower. Rejoice in the Lord always. Hallelujah. That he can set the captive free and heal the brokenhearted. That he can restore you and your family. He can restore a broken marriage. He can restore your bank account. He can restore all things. Yes, Lord. Amen. Rejoice in him because your circumstance is going to change. So rejoice in the Lord always. He says this 16 times in the epistle. Rejoice. You think that's important? I mean 16 times. Joy or rejoice. And rejoice means a cheerful calm. See, when you begin to rejoice in the Lord, there's a calmness that comes to your heart. There's a peace that comes to your mind when you begin to rejoice in him. And Pastor Matt kind of said this, but I, was, I work at a gym and um, the gentleman that owns the gym, his name is Dean. And I walked in the office and we're always talking about the Lord. He loves the Lord. And he said, when you're focused on your circumstance, it's like a card placed right in front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. Like all you can see is the circumstance. That's right. He said, but when you begin to refocus yeah. and you focus on your God, yeah. your God becomes greater than the circumstance. Oh, and look, we Lord. stay like this. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but you can't see clear that way. Right. We can't see clear that way. God help us to refocus yes. on you yes. because when we focus on our problem, our problem becomes bigger than yes. our God. And yes. listen, Paul had every right, okay, if I can say it was like justified, to be sitting in the prison and be like, why am I here? Right, right. I mean, he was such a man of God. Mm. Why was he there? Mm. But he didn't focus on his problem. He focused on his God yes. and rejoiced in the, yes. this is a man that was in prison, shackled, bound, hungry, beaten, shipwrecked. Mm. Have we been there? Mm. I don't think we've been there in a degree he's been there. Come on. Mm. Yeah. We haven't. But you know what? It might feel that way sometimes. Right, right. And God is not intimidated by our humanity. That's right. But... He wants us to learn. See, I told you, process of learning. Yes. How to rejoice. And I always do this, right? Amen. I'll be grumbling and complaining Amen. as soon as I walk out the building. And I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but then the Holy Spirit will come and say, rejoice. Yeah. <laughs> rejoice, because I'm about to change that. Rejoice, because I'm going to move. Rejoice, because I'm going to do something for, for you. Rejoice, I don't just do it for the pastor, I do it for you. Rejoice, I don't just do it for the pastor's wife, I do it for you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in Him. Rejoice in Him. If you don't get anything else today out of my message, rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. Always. Always. Always, always, not just Sunday, not just Wednesday. Amen. <laughs> always. Amen. You can get out of bed in the morning when your feet hit the floor and it's 5 a.m. I don't know about anybody else. I get up at 4.15. And I get up and I don't want to get up at 4.15. Who wants to get up at 4.15? Not me. So I get up and I have to rejoice in the Lord always. God, thank you that I'm not under a bridge shooting heroin anymore. Thank you that I'm not in jail anymore. Thank you that I'm not the same woman I used to be. I'm not going to get real with you, okay? Because we go through real circumstances and real things in life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that I'm not the same. Thank you that I'm not the same that I was yesterday. Hallelujah. Thank you that I'm not the same that I was when I got saved. Thank you that I can learn every single day from 
from you and you can strengthen me and I can rejoice in you always. Not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Amen. You can rejoice in him for who he is. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord no matter how you feel. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes. His life was on the line. Listen, I'm sure we go through some trials that we feel like our life is on the line. Our very faith. Yes. Our, our very faith is on the line. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes. And there's this song. I'm not going to sing it because I'm not a good singer. <laughs> but it says, I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. I feel the joy of the Lord delivering me. I feel the joy of the Holy Ghost all over me. Yeah. And then it goes, I have been loosed. I've been set free. So pardon me a moment while I have a jubilee. Yeah. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. And I tell, listen, when we were in Bible college, they started singing this song in a chapel. When I was going through one of the greatest trials of my faith at the time, and I, listen, sometimes in the chapel like I don't want to be here what am I doing here oh my the Lord's not going to meet me here you ever feel like that don't act like you haven't walked into this church and felt God's not going to meet me today but they started singing this song I feel the joy of the Lord and I was like oh I feel that yes I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on when they started singing I have been loosed you have to know that that you have been loosed you have That thing that's been bothering you, that's been holding over your head when you walked in this morning, that thing can be gone in Jesus' name because you have been loose. You've been set free. Okay? Sabrina was having a jubilee this morning. Okay? Because she was loose. And guess what? He doesn't just do that for her. He does it for you. He does it for me. He does it for all because the Calvary did that for you. Amen. Yes. Count, rejoice. Yes. Rejoice in your freedom. Hallelujah. Rejoice always. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Mm, Jesus. Thank you, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. And then after he says rejoice, listen, I'm going to go through the book because you got to get a picture of this. See, he says, I urge you, rejoice. Yes. Then he goes on to say, be careful for nothing. So rejoice, fear not. He says rejoice before the fear not. Okay, because catch this. If you're rejoicing, you're not going to fear. That's right. Thank you, Lord. If your eyes are on him, he's going to take care of it all. Yeah. Amen. So fear not, child of God, 365 times in the Bible, once for every day. Fear not. Thank you, Lord. I love that because I don't know about you, but I, there's this book called Heinz Feet, and her name is Much Afraid. My kids know about that. Yeah. Okay? Her name is Much Afraid in the book. It's an allegory book. And I was like, I'm so much afraid. Like every day of my life, there's some type of fear, some type of something that tries to grip you and paralyze us from moving forward in the things of God. But perfect love casts out yes. all fear. Amen. Amen. And when we rejoice in his love and we rejoice in him and that he is absolutely in yes. control. Yes. The Lord tells me all the time, Angela, you are not in control. Mm -hmm. Stop. Take off your feet. Your, uh, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Yes. Like I've got you, Angela. You're not in control, Angela. Right, right, right. Give, see, that's where I struggle. I struggle giving him my control. I want to control everything right. and fix everything and make it look pretty. And, and, everything. and no, he's like, no, Angela. This is not the way I want to do it. I want to do it this way. Yes. You're not in control. Oh, Give me your control. And when you feel out of control, you get afraid. <laughs> right. So rejoice. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. Don't be anxious. That, that word careful means anxious. Anxiety will cause stress. Anxiety will cause depression and it will paralyze us. It will be, we'll become paralyzed in this state of anxiety. Yeah. So what's he I beseech you, I urge you, rejoice. <laughs> 
Rejoice in the Lord always. It says, be careful for nothing but in everything, every trial, every circumstance, every situation of your life. Walk through it with quiet confidence in your God. That he is able to do what he said he would do. When if you don't know what he said, it pick up his word. I remember one time I was learning how to pray. Still learning. But someone, I think it might have been Naya's mom again. She said, pray the word of God. Pick up the word of God and start just praying the scripture. Read the scripture. Preach to yourself. Get along with God and pray the scripture. Because it will get itself embedded in your heart. There's a strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. When his truth is richly embedded in your heart, you will not be moved. You will not be shaken. Thank you, Jesus. You will not be dismayed. The Lord will meet you there. Amen. Pray the scripture. Amen. Pray his word. And in everything, stand fast in prayer and supplication. Listen, I know we all, all don't pray the same, okay? And we all don't worship the same. And we're not supposed to. He made us individuals. Yes, yes. He did. But God wants us to be a praying people. Amen. He wants us to be a praying people. Yes, yes. You See, sometimes we're like, God, why aren't you moving? And Pastor Borg says this all the time. He says, and God's looking down like, why aren't you moving? Come on. Right, <laughs> why are you moving? That's right. Like, God has given us access by the blood of Jesus Christ to come into his throne room to access him. See, this all has to do with learning. This is a process of learning. Learning to come to him. Learning to cast our cares upon him. Learning learning to rejoice. Learning to lay hold of him. Learning to adhere to him. Learning. Learning to pray. With prayer and supplication. With an earnest seed. Yes. The desperation always precedes deliverance. Mm. Amen. Desperation always precedes deliverance. Amen. He allows us to get in a desperate state that we would call on his name. Because how many times has he blessed us and we forget? Mm. I'm just saying. Come on. We do. But through this desperation, God will equip you for the next step. Amen. Yes. He's getting you ready. Yes. Get ready. Yes. Get ready. Yes. Get ready. Because yes. I'm telling you what, I don't want to go take a test without studying. Right, Amen. Right, Naya? Amen. Naya preached on that. It was so good. Y'all have to hear it. But I want to study. Yeah. I want to know what's on the exam. I want to be prepared. Hallelujah. And through your circumstances and through your hardships and through yes. Paul's imprisonment, yes. he was preparing and equipping through the power of God. He was strengthening. See, that's what he's doing yes. with us. Yes. He's strengthening you by the power of God through your circumstance. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. He's equipping you for the next step. I don't know what your next step is, but I can't wait to see it. Right, yeah, right. Me too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And once we learn how to rejoice, always, and then we learn how to pray without ceasing and supplication, then we thank him. Listen, start thanking God for the things he hasn't done yet. Amen. That's right. Faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance of things not yet seen. I remember Pastor Mike said, thank, then God spoke to him and said, thank me for this. And he said, but God, you haven't done it yet. And he said, thank me now. And he started thanking him and guess what happened? It happened. Listen, thank you, Jesus. Thank him for the healing we haven't received yet. Thank him for the deliverance we haven't received yet. Thank him for restoring that which you haven't seen restored yet. Thank him because that's faith. That's faith. And once we rejoice, once we're refocused, once we get in his
his presence and thank him, guess what happens? The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It's going to guard your heart and mind. See, this is a learning process. There's some steps yeah. to this. Yes, I feel like this book was laid out this way to show us the process of learning. Amen. And that peace that guards to keep guard your heart and your mind in Christ. It's watching. See, the Holy Ghost is inside of you. Yes. He's your alarm system. Yes. You got a great alarm system that will tell you in advance things to come. He is the truth. He will lead you and guide you into all truth. He will guard your heart. And actually, um, Maddox asked me this question when we were in prayer in a youth group. He said, why do pastors always say the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. He's like, but it was a great question. We had a whole class on it. It was a great question because that peace that surpasses all understanding is a peace that it says in the Greek causes you to excel above your circumstance. Oh, wow. That's good. That's juicy. That's good. I, I need that in my life. Hallelujah. I need the peace of God. Yes. to guard me yeah, yeah. and to cause me to yeah. excel. See, it didn't say the circumstance was gone. That's right. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. Eagles soar above the storm. The peace of God, the storm's still raging. But that peace causes you to excel above your circumstance. Amen. But if you're focused, look, if, if an eagle's flying and it's focused on the storm below, you're going down, okay? But when you're focused on God, he's going to cause you to excel by his peace over that storm. Amen. Through that storm. God's going to bring you through this morning. But this is something that Paul had to learn. And we learn through trials. We learn through tests. So as an example, Pastor Matt gave it, Paul and Silas, they prayed and they sang praises to their God. And what I love about the scripture, it says that the prisoners heard them. See, you don't know who's in here this morning. And you don't know, we don't know. We don't know what each other's going through. You have no idea the battle that it took me even to walk through these doors this morning. And I'm just being real. But God, God, but we began to sing praises even though I told Naya, stop praying. Like, this is me. Like, I'm being real, okay? I was like, Naya, stop praying. We don't pray until we hit the bridge. This is me in control. spouse what's going on here <laughs> and when they began to sing praises and prayed unto God suddenly there was an earthquake yes. and the prison doors were open yes listen I want there to be an earthquake in Patterson yes. Louisiana I, I didn't come from New Jersey to Baton Rouge to Patterson Louisiana to just sit here and play church I want to Quality. Yes. He's building a quality of people right yeah. here. See, it was only Paul and Silas that were in the prison. There was only two. God is doing a work in each one of us so that we have something to give those that are bound and those that are shackled and those that don't have any hope. And I remember the day I didn't have any hope. I remember who came into the jail and told me, see, I love this because they got set free in jail. I got 
to give you a suddenly moment and an immediately moment. Yes. Okay, He's the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He does not change. The same miracles that he did in the word of God, I'm going to stand on them today. That he can still do what he said he would do. And the scripture said, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am in to be content. God Help us to be independent from the pleasures of this world yes. and the things of this world that would take us away from Christ. See, Paul said, no matter if I'm comfortable or I'm not, we got to get there. Yeah. I have to get there. Because yeah. we can go through some uncomfortable things and begin to doubt God. Yeah. We can go through some things that don't we don't think look like God, <laughs> but is God. That's right. Hallelujah. We are to be a people separated to God. Daniel purposed in his heart to not partake of the king's delicacies. I love that scripture. Because it didn't say that Daniel was perfect. It said he purposed. He, per he had a dedication in his heart. And I'll tell you this. I, when I was in the program that I was in, I'm telling you a lot of my business this morning. Um, so when I was in the program that I was in, I was court mandated in this program. So, you know, you could do a lot of things when the court's hanging over your head. You could sing praises to God and hallelujah. And I remember the day that my court mandation dropped. I remember the day that I was off probation and the court, after a year and a half, dropped all my charges and dropped everything. And there was a moment that I had to sit there and I had to say, is this real? Am I really going to do this? Am I real? And it took me two seconds. Uh, yeah. Literally took me two seconds right. because God had already been equipping me. Yeah. He had already been preparing me. I had already been sitting with him. Listen, and I didn't do everything perfect. <laughs> I, 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 I would say that I was like A plus material, but I was, there was a, a legalism that was going on. I put on a show for a while until God really got a hold of my heart yeah. and I allowed him to deal with some things in my life. And there was a reality that came forth from my circumstances oh boy. and my situation. And the day that they dropped my mandate, I said, am I really going to do this? It took me two seconds. I said, I'm going all the way. Yeah. I purposed in my heart that I was never going to look back. Amen. I was not going back. Yeah. If I go back, I'll die. And I know that for sure. So the, no, there's no shadow of a doubt. There's no turning. There's no other way. Peter said, where else yes. can I go, Lord, for you have the words of life? Back is not an option. Yes. If you feel like back is an option this morning, it's not an option. If you feel like escaping is an option this morning, it's not an option. If you feel like suicide is an option this morning, it's not an option. None of these ways are options. Yes. Jesus will strengthen your heart. Rejoice! Take your eyes off of it. Yeah. Set your eyes on him and learn in whatsoever condition you are in to be satisfied with him. Amen. To be content to draw from him. Amen. He said, I've learned both to be abased and I know how to abound. A basement depressed, like there was a depression going on. But you know what he did? He humbled himself. Yes. He said, all right, God, I'm here. 
I'm in this circumstance. You see it. You know it. You know all things. But I'm here and I'm not quitting. And I believe you. And I'm in constant pursuit of you. And I'm going to pursue you in the prison. I'm going to pursue you on the mountaintop. I'm going to pursue you in the valley. I'm going to pursue you when someone dies. I'm going to pursue you when my heart is broken. I'm going to pursue you when I get a raise. I'm going to pursue you when I lose my job. I'm going to pursue you when things are good and when things are bad. I'm going to learn to be a base allow you to have your way but I'm going to learn to excel and, and abound as well Amen. Amen. I'm going to learn and because he allows us to go through the abase so when we go through the abounding we don't take it for granted yes. Yes. don't forget about the Lord when he's got you abounding yes. in whatsoever state I've learned to be content hallelujah it's a growth process it's a growth process. And we're going to learn it through trials. I love this scripture and I'm just going to read it because I feel led to read it. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace where we stand and rejoice in the hope of God our glory and not only so but we glory in tribulations also knowing that tribulation worketh patience patience yes yes lord and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost yes, which is given unto us what does that tell me we're in a process God is producing something through your trial. He's producing patience that you will learn to under abide in your situation. That he's going to take you through it. He's going to take you through it this morning. He's going to take you through. And that will cause an experience with God through your relationship with Christ. And an experience, hope. That the next time you go through it, you can say, God got me through that, and he's going to get me through this. God seen me through here, and he's going to see me through there. I've experienced him this way, and I'm going to continue to experience him. Because he's producing an exceedingly way of glory in my heart, and in my life, and in my family. Amen. Hallelujah. But you access it. You access it. There's a relationship. Yeah. You have to access. He gave it to you. He died for you. It's yours. Yeah. Yeah. Get up and take it. Take what's yours. Mm -hmm. Take the peace that's yours. Yes. Yes. Take the power that's yours. And I don't mean that. God died to give it to you. Amen. So it's Amen. yours. Just like he, Pastor Matt was saying about my God. He wants you to experience yes. his Peace. He wants you to experience his power, but it's yours. He said, that was what I have received from the Father. I now give to you. Yes. It's yours. Amen. So we got to get up and access it by faith through grace. Yes. Unmerited favor. Glory to God. We don't have to merit anything. That's how we are. We're on a work system. You do scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. But God doesn't do that. That's right. He said, I died already while you were yet sinners. Christ died for us. It's yours. Yes. It's yours. It's yours to take. God wants to give you victory and power in this state of contentment. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Then he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. It was a joy for him to go to the cross. It was a joy for him to give you what he died to give you. So why will we not take that? Why will we, why will we let that slip? And I'm, I'm guilty of it because we're human and we forget and we get caught up in the storm. But I want to remind you this morning of what he died to give you. And he died to give you access to his throne. 
The scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Remember in the beginning, I gave you the word and domino, and it means to empower, enable, to strengthen, and to make strong. But it was a fixed position. It's been fixed. Yes. You know, like a fight <laughs> that's been fixed. He already won. Yes. It's been fixed. When he died on Calvary, he said, it is finished. Amen. So I don't know. And if you would stand with me, please, Naya, if you would please come up. This is the altar call that I feel like the Lord has given me. I believe that the Lord wants to restore, restore and empower some people today. I believe that sometimes through our circumstances, we can lose heart. Yes. And we can lose faith. And we can lose strength. But I believe that God wants to empower and to restore your hope. Amen. He wants to empower and restore your strength. And he wants to remind you that this is a fixed position. Yes, it is. You're already in him. Amen. So the strength that you need, the healing that you need, the deliverance that you need, the freedom that you need, the restoration that you need if you feel like you've been away from him and you need to come back to him. He will restore you. Amen. It's fixed. So let him strengthen your heart this morning to restore your faith that we can keep running this race together. And I believe that the Lord is going to do a work this morning in our hearts if we will access him. Somebody said to me one time, give them a chance. So I say that to you. Give them a chance. Give them a chance to prove himself to you. Give them a chance and he will. I promise you that he will.